Hi, I'm Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. Our topic today is political stress in the workplace. I'm joined by two of my friends from the Health Action Alliance and Meteorite. Stephen Levine and Stephen Massey are the co-CEOs of Meteorite and they are the co-founders of the Health Action Alliance, which is an organization that Mercer has been working with for the past several years since the pandemic. And so um, welcome, thank, thank you, you for being here Thanks with for me. Us, so I think it would be great if maybe we started off by you sharing a little bit about Meteorite and the Health Action Alliance. Tell us, tell us about your organizations. Well, fantastic. Um, thanks so much for the opportunity to be here today and for being part of the Meteorite journey. Um, we created Meteorite in 2019 to be an agency that really worked to uh, achieve impact at scale. A fun science fact, uh, there are lots of shooting star ideas to change the planet, but a meteorite only becomes a meteorite when it actually makes impact with the Earth, hence our name. So we're always trying to bring great ideas uh, to, uh, to fruition and deliver that at scale. Um, Stephen and I have been working together for now more than a decade. Um, we met through a partnership between a large foundation where I was working and Stephen was working at Univision at the time and came together to work on a project to really help Hispanic parents talk, read and sing to their young children more, uh, uh, more frequently during the first five years of life. Uh, that campaign made a lot of impact in the community, but it also afforded us the opportunity to work together. And from that friendship became Meteorite in this partnership that we've created over the past uh, five years. Okay, so when Mercer first started working with the Health Action Alliance, one of the things that I thought was very intriguing about the two of you is that you've each worked at the White House before, yeah. one of you for a Republican and one of you for a Democrat. That's right. And so um, for our topic today, it just, you know, it makes me have all of these questions, um, one of which is, how did you end up working together? And then the second one is, do you ever talk about politics? Well, I think uh, we we instantly connected, I think. And I think when you, uh, I'll say there are, there are a lot of shared qualities for people who work in public service. Uh, and I think no matter what side of the aisle you may have served on, uh, there is a really a shared uh, uh, commitment to, um, to civil service and to supporting your community and, and supporting others. Uh, and it's something that I saw certainly in Stephen um, when when we first met, and uh, and I and I'll say uh, I think has really been uh, a touchstone of our of our relationship, our partnership for for the past ten years. Um, I think uh, after we worked together on that first campaign, we uh, we worked together for several more years when I was at Univision, and, and Stephen was with with many foundations, and uh, and then we said we need to we need to start something together, and so we launched Meteorite uh, to really think about how we can bring together uh, a whole set of new partners that maybe wouldn't have necessarily worked together before uh, to solve some, some major challenges. And one of those challenges, Tracy, is, uh, is uh, health and mental health in the workplace. And that's really what got us uh, starting the Health Action Alliance at the height of the COVID pandemic. Uh, and I think today, what we've seen is that uh, one real challenge, as you've said, uh, that, that many workplaces are facing is navigating this polarized society, this polarized culture that we have, particularly during election seasons. Uh, and so I think that's been a real topic that we've been thinking a lot about at the Health Action Alliance. And, uh, and I think we've been um, helping employers think about ways that they can really uh, continue to operate uh, and really invite their employees to come to work and show up um, in, in an authentic way, uh, but also in a respectful way, in a way that, that encourages belonging and a sense of, uh, of respect and, and, uh, and, and cohesion, uh, even amidst these, these polarizing times. So that would be where you would start if you were giving advice to an employer is to focus on that, that shared mission. Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think so. I think there's there's really sort of three areas that that I think about when I'm talking to a company. Uh, first is mission, second is values, and the third is impact. And so I think uh, that that mission, sort of really understanding uh, that that the reason why all of us as colleagues in a company are coming together is uh, is for a shared mission, uh, right? If we are making 
uh, uh, cars, we're going to make the best cars that we can make as a company, right? And that's what's bringing us together. Uh, and so I think really defining uh, 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 what, what we've called a mission first culture is really critical uh, to, to making sure that, uh, you know, you are, uh, that you are focused on what's bringing us all together. The second is your values and really identifying the, the values that many companies and employers have to, uh, to have respectful communication, to think about uh, creating a space that's inclusive and a, and a place where every employee feels like she or he belongs uh, is critical. And I think those values help, uh, help you establish some guardrails or guidelines on how you can have productive conversations even during contentious moments or on contentious subjects. And the third area is impact. And I think, as we always say at the Health Action Alliance, action is our middle name. And, uh, and we think that action is often an antidote uh, for stressful situations. So, uh, for example, with the election, I think encouraging empl uh, employees to take action that helps them be productive and, and actually arrive at solutions uh, to the challenges or the issues that they feel uh, perhaps anxious about uh, I think is a really effective channel uh, for for those for those folks to uh, to think about as an outlet for that uh, for that anxiety that energy. So whether it's voting or volunteering or getting active in your community, uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities for you to encourage action in a nonpartisan way uh, as as an employer. Yeah, you know, um, through the Health Action Alliance, I mean, we first got involved with you around the pandemic and mental health, and that's evolved into business action to end HIV, and then most recently, the National Commission on Climate and Workforce Health. And so those are all, you know, very kind of mission-driven mm -hmm. um, campaigns. But also through Meteorite, um, you have the Civic Alliance, that's correct? Right. Yeah. And so um, do you want to just talk a little bit about um, how businesses have aligned with that and maybe has that been helpful, do you think, in um, addressing election stress? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Civic Alliance is an initiative that we created at Meteorite in partnership with uh, several large nonprofit organizations ahead of the 2020 election to help really mobilize the private sector to encourage nonpartisan civic engagement. You know, we know in this country that less than 60% of Americans participate in most presidential elections. We are one of the countries at the lower end, uh, if you think about industrialized country in terms of voter participation. And for most Americans, when they don't participate in elections, they give a couple of reasons. One is that they don't know why it really matters. And two, they say that they don't have the time off to vote. And so what we acknowledged was that actually employers could play a really big role on both of those things. Americans trust their employer to deliver information, important information about health and civic life. And employers can certainly create flexible schedules and other strategies to help uh, employees participate in elections. And so in 2020, we helped create an initiative that mobilized more than 1,300 companies across the country to take very meaningful action in encouraging civic engagement, whether that was voter education in the workplace, voter registration. When you onboard an employee, oftentimes they're moving to a new city or a new environment. So making voter registration part of an employee's onboarding experience, a simple action that an employer could take, but could really start the process for someone who's never voted before to get registered. That's step one, right? Um, we've also seen companies uh, encourage employees to participate as poll workers, um, and in fact have worked with some large retailers to uh, provide paid time off from the workplace to participate um, as a poll worker. Some companies have even gone a step further and encouraged their employees to run for office. There are thousands of uh, empty uh, office uh, positions around the country um, and also lots of uncontested elections. And creating, again, space for employees to take action by running for office is something that many employers have begun doing. So not every employer is gonna take the same step, but what we like to think about is creating a ladder of engagement so that employers uh, can uh, support their employees, can encourage their employees to be in, in, involved um, in, in civic life, and also create space in the workplace to have these types of important civic conversations. So I love your enthusiasm for that. Um, but I think that there's also, you know, a segment of the population that actually 
gets really bothered by mm. this time of the year, by the news, by the political commercials, by you know um, negative um, or depressing news um, of you know what's happening in current events, yeah. and so you know we also have kind of a mental health side Absolutely. to this. And so, um, do you have you know kind of advice for employers in helping um, their employees on that topic? Yeah, I think uh, it's 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 so true, Tracy. And I think uh, you know there there's certainly uh, this time of year, this election uh, is is one that can that can really generate high levels of anxiety among among employees. Uh, and I'll say there's a whole host of world events that are happening right now that I think can spark high levels of anxiety. Uh, and so I think what what we really encourage many companies to do is uh, first acknowledge that this is uh, a, a, a challenging time. Uh, and that the media and the conversation uh, and the whole tone of uh, of our culture at times can feel uh, can feel like it's very high stakes and uh, and can can produce anxiety. And so I think even when you see leaders acknowledge that, it's helpful. Uh, I think the other real opportunity is to remind employees about what resources you as a company are offering to your employees from a mental health perspective. Whether it's flexible time off or mental health days or your employee assistance program, I think these are really valuable tools to, uh, again, provide outlets for your employees to feel like they have support and resources. And the third thing I'll mention is uh, leveraging employee resource groups that at the end of the day, uh, uh, when you are in a community of your peers and you have shared interests, I think uh, using or leveraging those relationships, I think, are uh, really valuable opportunities for companies to, um, to, uh, to, to ensure that every employee feels like they're supported and has uh, a community of peers. Yeah, so you brought it full circle back to belonging, which was where you started your remarks. So this has been super helpful and inspirational, I think, for employers to think about, you know, how are you supporting your employees in the workplace? How are you focused on what it is that brings you all together as a business, how you work together, but then acknowledging perhaps you can motivate people to get more involved or to help them if if that's not something that they're comfortable with. And so um, lots of good um, advice here. And just thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for your partnership. Well, thank you, Mercer, for leading this charge. One of the things that gets me really excited is acknowledging that the workplace is one of those last places in American life where people from different backgrounds who might not think exactly the same way politically, might not uh, hang out in the same circles um, in their own communities, but where they come together to solve problems together. And it's a great petri dish for our democracy and employers play a really important role in bridging divides in our society and in our communities. And so thank you for, to Mercer for championing this and to the employers watching for the work that you're doing um, in your workplaces to bridge divides. All right, thank you. Thanks for joining us.